Sage, sage, sage. There is someone who was your age once and did a lot of things they shouldn't have been doing. I really got to teach you a thing or two about ditching school properly. Thank the heavens, Shana Kialoha was finally doing something about cursing herself while potion making and cursing her armpits. I would hate to be your family and around you right now. Shanna was back in her third favorite place in the Sim Nation, the realm of magic. It was very late and she needed to check the shops for curse cleansing ingredients before their stock changes at midnight. She almost lost her mind when she saw that the ingredients she needed weren't in stock. But after checking with the shop again after midnight, she was in luck. She had just what she needed to clean her armpits. Good, because I was literally about to start sobbing. She looked at what the other shops had to offer. If there was any wand or broom or crystal she had yet to collect. Or could gift to Sage or Aurora. Freaking Sage, ditching school while being a D student. She was still so upset about that. Which is so funny because this sitch literally never gets upset. But she was gonna forget about parenting right now. After talking with the sages of magic Rico, Felix, and Kelly. During her housewarming party a few nights ago. Shanna learned about the Keepers of Nature Coven and its high priestess Eva Shrivastava. Today, she was going to do her best to find a mysterious spellcaster. Despite not knowing what on earth she looks like. But first, she had some time to fuck around in the magic headquarters. She went inside one of the event halls and up to the podium on stage, pretending like she was teaching a class on magic. She could only imagine the types of things Eva talks about up here. How she had so much knowledge to learn from her, the strongest spellcaster alive. Yeah, she definitely couldn't do this. She was about to head outside when she ran into two spellcasters dueling. And the woman is dueling while wearing a face mask. It's iconic. Skincare first queen. But what isn't iconic is getting your ass handed to you by this pink fuck. Sorry Shanna. Did I speak too soon? She still had some time on her hands. So Shanna went ahead and introduced herself to the loser and challenged her to a duel as well. Shanna, you are a virtuoso. That is just cruel. And your armpits still stink, even more cruel. Well, Shanna knew one thing for sure. This sim definitely wasn't Eva. I'm just like Shanna knew she would. She obliterated the poor newbie spellcaster. I guess she just needed the ego boost. She went back home, now exhausted, immediately heading downstairs to make the potion of curse cleansing. Meanwhile, little Jasper was busy exploring his new world as a toddler, having loads of fun with all of the new toys mummy rich bitch Simusi bought for his birthday. Red Wine Supernova was building a new toddler bed for her baby, and Shana was doing her best to not pass out from exhaustion or from the putrid odor emitting off her own body. It was getting bad. She tried to make this potion as quick as possible. And when you try to make things quick, sometimes you miss vital steps. She missed something alright. Because she cursed herself again. And now she's green, like a giant booger. You are not Bella Westwood. The twins prematurely woke up from the monster under the bed. For fuck's sake. Why are you interrupting me with this shit? You're a spellcaster and you're literally a whole werewolf. Eat it or something. Dexter is still here. A Apparently, I had no idea. He went ahead and put Jasper to sleep, reading him a werewolf-themed bedtime story as Rises the Moon waited patiently for him to finish. She needed him to make her finish when he was done. Things were so nice and stress-free with Dexter. Rainy days had grown to realize. He has been such a great father to Jasper. He is so supportive, so loving, so perfect. She felt herself falling more in love with him every single day. She hoped that Shanna would get that potion for her sooner than later. There is nothing Rayovac Batteries wanted more than a clean slate with her emotions before being with Dexter. And thank God, Shanna successfully made the potion of curse cleansing. We are free from 
from the trenches. She took to servings to wipe away both of her curses, and was very pleased with the now aromatic scent emitting from her pits. She finally smelled good again. Oh nitrogen monoxide. Jasper woke up from his sleep. Baby, I beg of you not to turn around and traumatize yourself. After getting some fresh air, Shanna, looking and smelling as good as ever, was heading back to the magic realm to get started with her hunt for the high priestess, and upon arrival, she was frightened. Yes, a crying child would frighten me to girl. First, she started with the magic headquarters, searching every square inch of the grounds for someone mysterious enough to possibly be Eva. She found most of the spellcasters conversing in the library. She introduced herself to a few of them, and they were all really friendly. She even asked some of them about Eva, if they knew who she was or where she was. Finding out that everybody knows about Eva Srivastava, everyone except her, it seemed, but no, none of the spellcasters had seen her around today. Since that search led to nowhere, she went to a bar in Glimmerbrook to get some lunch and a drink. She sat at the bar and drank a spicy martini as she thought things over. This was already proving to be difficult. How the hell was she supposed to hunt down the high priestess when she doesn't even know what she looks like, what she sounds like, how she dresses or carries herself? Perhaps she should ask around. There were plenty Plenty of spellcasters here, but she didn't want to look like a complete idiot asking about Eva and appearing to be the only spellcaster that wasn't acquainted with her. At least for now, she wouldn't ask anyone else but the sages about her. With her meat and cheese platter digesting in her body, she decided to try a bit harder. As soon as she left the bar, she explored the world of Glimmerbrook. She walked up and down the trails, looking at everybody she passed by, and stopping to look for frogs and other potion ingredients along the way. She thought she'd try her luck knocking on doors. She was sure this first house wasn't Ava's. It didn't seem witchy enough. Besides, nobody seemed to be home anyways. She then approached a brick house hidden in the trees. Again, nobody home. And finally, she stopped at the last home in Glimmerbrook, which was, again, empty. How the hell was she supposed to do this? Shanna would search the world a bit more, hoping that back at home, her sister-in-law Ride or Di Volkov had spotted the two soulmate begone potions on the kitchen counter Shanna had bought for her this morning in the magic realm. The kids had gotten back home right around this time. Sage and Oasis very energized, Aurora very drained. She hated school so much, hated it. Fuck learning new skills and making friends. It was so much better being alone. Oasis was pretty over it too, stressed out from having to miss recess to retake a test. Sage enjoyed his last day of elementary school. He was ready to get on with high school and spellcasting. Despite being grounded from yesterday's shenanigans, he was in high spirits, knowing that nothing would get between him and his birthday candles later tonight. He enjoyed some of his favorite kid activities one more time while miserable Aurora went to take a nap and Oasis went to grab a slice of Jasper's cake. Pissed off while eating cake. Damn, you really are your mother's daughter. Shanna was feeling a bit guilty for being so hard on Sage last night. She didn't like punishing her kids, even when those little shits deserve it. But he just has to prioritize school. She praised him for doing his homework and makeup work, promising that once his grades are up again, they can explore spellcasting more. Together, she was glad he took an interest in it, and Autumn got promoted to a design guru. Way to go my favorite little lesbian. It was time for Sage to age up to a teenager. Autumn couldn't believe it. Her son was a teen already. It felt like just yesterday when she helped deliver him on Shantam's bed and held him for the first time. And now he was all grown up. Upon aging up, Sage gained a goofball trait. All right, let's see what he looks like. Huh? Interesting. That's all I have to say. I gave him a quick makeover, and he turned out absolutely adorable. He definitely took a lot of Shanice genetics. Such a little nerd. Sage was so excited to finally be entering this phase of his life. And though he was already grounded, there's no harm done if he sneaks out to the magic realm while his family is asleep. Right, 